Hello there. Just recently, Darren McHardy posted a video entitled, Your Video Sucks. <laughs> well done, Darren, for having the cojones to do that. I thought, when, it, when I saw that title, a lot of people are going to go, Oh, really? <laughs> but it's actually a fantastic video. I'm going to leave a description to, uh, sorry, I'm going to leave a link to Darren's video in the description and I advise you all to go and have a look at it. He, he, he has some fantastic advice on it. He talks about three simple steps to make your footage better and, and, and he says, he talks about using 4K at 24 frames per second. He talks about the relationship between shutter speeds and ISO and frame rates and he gives a detailed explanation of how to put that footage with matching settings into your editor. He talks about exporting, how to export your finished video to get the best quality. And then he talks about how to up upload it to YouTube to get the best quality as well. He also talks about accessories that he uses, memory cards, ND filters. Uh, and he talks a little bit about flying techniques, how to improve your skills. It's a fantastic video. It's a, the link's in the description. I advise you to go and have a look at it. So what do I want to talk about today that relates to that? I want to talk about some simple things, eight, eight actually simple things that you can do uh, uh, to improve your footage. And I'm not talking about creative manoeuvres, um, you know, um, panning up to reveal a, a fantastic horizon or, or different things like that. I'm talking about, 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 about eight other things. So what I would first say is when you have been out filming and, and uh, you've, you're doing landscapes or you're doing beautiful locations and areas, when you come in, just sit down, before you start editing, before you start doing anything, look at your footage and think, what could I improve in that footage? Just pick one thing and think, what is the one thing that I could improve in that footage? And then take a wee note of that. And then look at, disregard that, and look at it and say, is there anything else I could improve? And take a note of all the things that you think looking at your video you could improve and if you're not sure what you could improve compare it with other videos of similar types and say well oh they do something that's really good there then look at your own and say well i don't do that so that could be an improvement if i did this thing okay so that's the first thing but let's get into the eight points that i see when everyone asks me to review one of their, their videos and say have a look at this and tell me what you think i i see and i'm sure darren sees this as well it's the it's the it's the same things, the same not mistakes, but the same things that could be improved that, that I see when people ask me to look at their videos. And there's in total well, there's there's a lot of things, but I'm going to talk about eight of the things that I see mainly, the main eight things that I see that could be improved in people's videos when they send them to me to have a look at. Now that doesn't mean that everyone has eight things, the the all of these eight things in their videos. They may only have one or two of, of, of these uh, things that could be improved in their videos. But out of all of the videos that I've had a look at that people have asked me to, to do a, a kind of critique on, I've come up with eight things over all of the videos looked at that, that are quite common. And here they are. Okay, the first thing is jerky movements. And that is the you will yaw far too fast and, and, and there's a lot of jerkiness. Here's an example of that.
So how would you improve that? How would you sort out that jerkiness? Well, a simple way to do that is to go into your advanced gimbal settings and change the speed of the yaw and the smoothness of the yaw. And if your jerkiness is also up and down with your gimbal, that's the pitch, change the speed of your pit, pitch and the smoothness of your pitch as well. And that should help to iron out some of the jerkiness. And here's an example of the same flight, or as close to the same flight as I can get, with these the, the smoothness and speed settings in the yaw and the pitch improved. Now, another thing that, that I I find when I'm watching a video that someone has sent me to review, most most people that, that are starting out and are fairly new to this make, make this what I think is a mistake. You spend far too long in the one shot. It might be a beautiful, absolutely fantastic shot of mountains or hills or architecture or, or whatever it is, but 10 seconds is plenty. 30 seconds is far too much and anything more than that I've, I've clicked on I've moved on I've clicked on it past that and most people have as well it's boring it may be beautiful picturesque and lovely but it's boring okay so limit your shot to five seconds ten at the very most now you can do that in a way that allows you to have a full minutes worth of this the same shot but you can break it up and you can do things like putting in a zoomed in section or during that one minute flight have, having a look at other points of interest. I'm not going to give you an example of a full minute looking at the same thing because as I say <laughs> it would bore you to tears and you would want to click on. But here's a couple of examples of how to break up a shot like that and keep your viewer interested in watching for the full minute or however long it is that you, that shot lasts. Another thing I see that I, 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 I think can be changed, and I, I've learned, I include myself in this as, I'm not a beginner now, I've, I've, been, I've been flying my drone for almost a year, and, and I have learned all of these things over the 
course of the year by watching my own videos and analysing them and thinking, oh, that's not very good, that's not very good, and making a wee note and changing these things that are not very good. But when I first started out, and, and mo most people who are beginners uh, make these mistakes, what I think are mistakes now, is if you're doing a, a flight, uh, let's say you're going to do a five minute video over a particular area, uh, and in my area it would be lochs and hills and uh, some small mountains and things like that. And it's, 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 re it's repeating footage in the wrong direction. Let me give you an example of, of that. Now that's footage that's kind of all over the place. One minute you're travelling in this direction and the next you're travelling back in the same direction and then you're travelling back in that direction again and it doesn't, there's, there's, no, there's no flow to the video. So a way to correct that is, is to, to, to think of your flight as a story with a start and an end point which can be the same, and it will be, if it's a drone, it's going to be a start and end point, the start and end point will be the same, and, and a middle section, and you want it to flow from the start to the end, you don't want it to flow from the start to point back to the end and then go, go on again and then start heading back and advancing on, and that's all over the place, so always have your flight going, not in the same direction, but in a, in a, in a, story-like manner so that it's a progressive journey that is eventually going to end back where you started if that if that's where you want to end there's nothing saying you can't land at a, at a different point but you're, you're not backtracking on yourself and then turning away again the viewer will just get disoriented and think what the hell is going on here another thing that, that i used to do and i i still do this and when i look back at my at my videos i think oh damn I wish I had just not done this or not done that. And and this is what it is. It's your horizon level is either too high, so there's only a tiny bit of sky and lots of land, or it's too low and there's that amount of sky and only this amount of land. It just does, doesn't look good. A way to correct that is to use the two-thirds rule. And if you put your grid lines up on your screen, it'll allow you to have the top third sky the middle third, your your main, whatever it is you're looking at, and the bottom third is the the foregrounds. What is it? Is it fore, foreground, background, and middle ground, maybe? I don't know. But um, I, I, I find that that is, is, is better to look at. Here's an example of, of, of that.
Another thing that annoys me when I look at my own footage and, and other people's footage, if I'm honest, uh, when they ask me to review it, and this, this, I think this is just one of my own personal bugbears and a lot of people don't seem to mind this or, or even notice this, to be honest with you. But it's when you have your drone set on auto and you're, you're coming across different lit areas. Some areas will be slightly darker than others. And the, uh, the, the, the camera will, if, will try to auto expose and your brightness levels change. That really annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> and let me know please in the comments if, if, if it annoys anyone else or if you're all like what are you on about it you don't even notice it and it's just something that I'm maybe p being a bit pedantic about but I, I, I notice this and it really annoys me and I, the way to prevent this is to go into pro settings and use ND filters that's the only way to prevent it as far as I'm aware but it, it does sort it out here's an example of an, of the, the auto exposure changing and then it rectified Another thing that a lot of people don't think is important, but I personally believe it's it's one of the most important things, if not the most important thing in creating a video that people uh, that you want people to watch and enjoy watching, and that's the music. Now, here's an example of mismatched music. And here's an here's the same the same shot, but this time with music that I think fits better. Now the music that you can take in your video is where the emotion is. You can you can try this, this yourself. Find one of my videos, any one of my videos, probably where I've done down at Loch Doon and I'm doing a scenic part, and just ha have the have the volume muted and watch the video, and and then watch it again with the the music on, and you'll see what what a difference the music makes. It just gives it an an emotional impact that isn't there without the music. So it's important to match the right music with. The, the footage that, you, that you're using and it doesn't always have to be peaceful lovely laddie damn music if you look at a, of my, a few of my videos and i'm thinking uh, on my recent video the one where i've done the pullback examples it's more dramatic music and it's a bit tense and and that fits because flying lassie backwards through tiny little gaps is a bit tense and is a bit dramatic but on, on some of my videos where I fly around Loch Doon, and Loch Doon's a beautiful area, and there's some nice peaceful, gentle music, maybe with some nice lyrics in there as well, that's more fitting. But to try and swap, if I if I was if I were to use those two pieces of music in the other the other way around, it just wouldn't it wouldn't quite work. In fact, I'll do that. Here's a wee example of that. The new. And the final thing I want to talk about that you could help improve your 
not necessarily your footage, but you could improve the video that you're putting out. And this is a difficult one, very difficult. And, and the, only, the only thing that can help you improve this is practicing it and spending a long time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a while to do this. And that is, if you're doing a voiceover of any type on your video, it's to not talk in a monotone voice that's very boring and going to make people want to slit their wrists just by listening to you. That That's just not going to work at all. The other thing um, is to uh, um, not put a, um, a lot of um, um, ums and ahs. Try to cut to a minimum the a's, the ums and the ohs while you're actually recording. If you are one of these creators, and there are many, many of them, who just talk and do ums and ums and ohs and mm, ah, 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 and then later on do jump cuts to cut it out, you'll end up with something that looks a bit like this. Here's an example of me where I did a lot of ums and ehs and ah, uh, ohs, but I cut them all out because they were horrible and I just decided that I wanted to do jump cuts instead. Now compare that with this where I'm going to do no jump cuts at all and I'm just talking plainly and I'm trying not to say a eh or um or oh or even have pauses. And I don't mean pauses to take a breath in. I'm talking about people who think that you, you can't have any pauses at all. So there you go. It's going to be difficult to do this, especially if you're not used to speaking into a microphone or speaking to an audience because I'm speaking to a camera just now. But I'm actually speaking to you, the audience, the people. And you have to try to understand and try to, to get that into your head that when you're talking to the camera, it's not a camera you're talking to, it's not a device, it's the people you're talking to. So try not to be boring <laughs> and try not to do ums and ohs. I, I, you can, if you're doing ums and ohs and pauses and stuff, and I do them, I, I make these all the time. But I'd prefer to keep those in than have a jump cut, jump cut every time I make a stutter or a slip or a pause. So that's an, th the final thing that I think you can do to improve your footage. So there you go, that's eight points. Slightly different from Darren's. Darren's points are all fantastic. Once again, go and look at his video and if you if you follow his advice there, your your footage will absolutely improve. If you follow my eight points as well on your own personal videos, your footage, not only your footage, but your whole videos will improve too. So I hope that was of some help to you. Give us a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.